It's time for EdTech Mondays, brought to you by Mastercard Foundation and CC Hub. Welcome to EdTech Mondays Nigeria, a platform that facilitates critical conversations on the use of technology for teaching and learning. My name is Chinyolo Akpa, your host, and it's good to be back again. This month, we'll be discussing the theme, Technology as an Enabler of Alternative Education. I'll take that again. Technology as an Enabler of alternative education. Diversifying learning pathways for youths involves creating flexible, technology-enabled alternatives that cater to their unique needs and circumstances. This approach recognizes that traditional education systems may not be suitable for everyone, particularly for those who have faced barriers due to socioeconomic factors, disability, or other challenges. Technology in particular has opened new doors, enabling self-paced learning, mobile first delivery, remote skills training, and access to certified programs beyond the walls of the classroom. But what is the true potential of alternative education in Nigeria? How far can technology go in enabling it? And what must change? be it policy, funding, or even design to make these learning pathways truly inclusive and impactful. This four-part series explores how technology can enhance diversified learning pathways for youths in Nigeria. On the show today, I am joined by two amazing guests who will be doing justice to this conversation. Our first guest is a researcher, a fact checker, and youth development advocate committed to using media, education, and technology to empower communities. As the coordinator for Project Leadership, Entrepreneurship, and Character Training, LECT, at Kayode Alabi Leadership and Career Initiative. He has led after school leadership and career programs, reaching over 5,000 underserved students. He also trains students, parents, and educators to use Rafiki AI, a multilingual WhatsApp based chatbot offering personalized career mentorship now used in over 46 countries. Welcome, Mustafa. It's good to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure being here. Our second guest is Eriolua Adeyinka, who is an educator and a social innovator committed to transforming education by equipping youths with the skills and tools to thrive. He is the founder of the Eriolua Adeyinka Co-Creation Hub, a social innovation hub supporting young talent and early stage teams through initiatives like TED Cycle, Incubate, and the Festival of Change. He serves as the executive director at YouthX Youth, a global learning community that has empowered over 2,000 youth across 80 plus countries. He also co-founded the World Teachers Foundation in Nigeria, focusing on teacher training and equitable education reforms. Join me to welcome Eriolua Adeyinka. Hi, Eriolua. It's good to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. So good to be here. Great. So let's jump into the conversation. The need for technology to achieve alternative education. And before we go into all the niceties, what is alternative education? And in line with our realities in Nigeria, is this something we should even be talking about? I'll start with you, Mustafa. Thank you so much for the question. Alternative education is essentially, just like the word implies, alternative and another version of the traditional education. And education, it's pretty much, when we talk education, our line of thought is mainly on school. And the form of education that we have, we have the formal, informal, and the non-formal. The informal education being the community-based education, the parenting, homeschooling, all of those. Then the formal education being the schooling proper, the forward of a cash classroom, and the non-formal be the bridge between the informal and the formal. So alternative education falls directly in this particular age, and what it does is it helps to cater 
for the need of those that are probably not able to cope or access formal education, that's schooling. Probably those that have special needs, those that have individual difficulties with coping with the demand and access to formal education. And with our current realities in Nigeria, it's no-brainer. We need alternative education, alternative education in every sense and regard. Because in Nigeria, um, statistics and data shows we have over 20 million out-of-school children which those are the ones that don't even get access to schooling. And now, going into the school itself, the number of students in school, the required ratio of teachers to students is about, the standard is about 1 to 10. But in Nigeria, we have about 100 to 1. So you see, to cater for the need of every of these learners is going to be very hard. But with alternative education, we are able to create environments that are suitable to the individual needs of each learner, create personalized learning environment for them, and help them cope and get education better. Thank you. Erilua, do you agree with what Mustafa has said? Do yes. we think alternative education is needed right now in Nigeria? I strongly believe that alternative education is needed. You know, when you think about the fact, just like he has given all the statistics, right? Thinking about the fact that millions of children are still out of school, and even seeing that most of the schools that we have right now are not necessarily accessible, and they're not inclusive, and we are still even talking a lot about decolonizing learning and so many other interesting things that we are currently battling with. So alternative education is actually something that we truly, truly need right now. So I believe that Nigeria is suited for that conversation and to start introducing more models. So in what you have said, just to establish, you know, the foundation for this conversation, alternative education will speak to the beat where students are being supported to learn away from what they would traditionally get in the four walls of the classroom and catering to their specific needs. Yes. So now, I'll start with you, Ariel Lua. What role does technology have to play in all of this? So technology has a very big role to play. Like we all know, technology is an enabler, right, of anything that we have. So I would give a few examples of some alternative models and with some of the young people that I've worked with as a result of my work. So you see some young people say, or parents even say, oh, I want to homeschool my child. Like, for example, I have some, some young people that their parents are currently taking them through an unschooling process. What is unschooling? So, ideally, then some people or some school of thoughts believe that um, education, the way we know it in the four walls, limits the creativity of a child. So, ideally, some people feel like a child that is, you know, when you ask a random child, what do you want to be? Mm. I want to be a punk. I want to, it can be one million things in one day. So, unschooling um, is that process. Of, because most times, people, children go into the four walls of school with those big dreams, and when they finish maybe high school, they don't even know what they want to become again. Okay. But it was a very quick question that they could fill in. So unschooling is the process of ensuring that we remove that cage, that mentality, that system. Okay. Okay. So that's just the entire process. Okay. So what, what technology does for parents that want to homeschool right now? So for example, I've seen parents that they can't teach arithmetic or math or something like that, and they want to homeschool their children. Okay. So what they do is that with technology, they're able to leverage maybe another parent who is currently homeschooling or get like a tutor to like fill in for, mm. for that um, deficiency that mm. they cannot necessarily like meet. So technology has really, really helped like those kind of models like become more effective, you know, in, in the, um, the alternative education model. So yeah, technology is an enabler definitely for me. Just to add to the context that you gave, the general education the formal education, schooling, in its every sense of it, is still out towards a general curriculum. So every student gets everything in the course of the system, throughout the system. But we are individuals. Every human has innate ability, individual differences. So parents get to see, oh, this is a specific attribute of my child that I want to aim or how to get more developed in or own their skills in that. With technology, there are no limitations or barrier to how much a student can learn or how much skill the student can get developed in. Because there is always a resources somewhere online. And technology also helps to identify the learning pattern of the learners because it helps to understand, oh, is he a visual learner, auditory learner, and stuff like that. So it helps to understand the learning pattern and bridge the gap by bringing learning in the way that is most understandable to that particular learner. Great. Thank you for your responses. And now understanding that, you know, what technology can do and how it can 
open up alternative education. Thank you for that, you know, brief session on unschooling and homeschooling because we've seen a lot of parents are doing this. A lot of parents are saying, no, I want to train my child at home. I want to add on to what school, the typical school system does. So now, what are the biggest challenges to the widespread adoption of alternative education programs? And I ask this because I know both of you are doing extensive work in this area. And does designing or delivering with technology solve any of these problems? I'll start with you, Eredua. Thank you so much for asking that um, amazing question. There are so many challenges. The first thing is that anything that can be done anywhere at any time, most times doesn't get done at all. <laughs> so when people explore a lot of alternative education, you see that many people don't complete that process. The challenge is that there's a lot of discipline that it requires to complete an alternative model of education. Like we will see, start, I mean, the one time I, I think I was reading a statistic from one of these online um, learning platforms, I don't want to mention it. <laughs> but like the interesting thing was that they said that they only have 30% of people who enroll on oh. their programs <laughs> on online courses <laughs> complete it. Okay. Right? So, um, so if you look at that now so that's a challenge but you know if a child comes to school you know you have to go to school every single you day must see for a term class. <laughs> right so um even some many people don't take assignment and modules and things of this online so there's that challenge and also if you look at the fact that we're looking at nigeria and um, a lot of like african countries seeing that technology penetration is still very low and i know that the government is trying to do a lot of things in like ensuring that we have more internet penetration with this whole 5g thing and more fiber optic stuff but like we still have like low penetration so you have we probably want to connect to like an online class and it's buffering for like the whole hour. So you are probably like um, interested. But another challenge with alternative system education is that um, no quality assurance. Mm. So a parent probably will just follow any video they find online or I mean, they just give children tabs or all of those kind of things. Like how do we ensure quality? So I think that's also another big challenge that I have seen. And technology has been solving that a bit because at least now, there are some companies or there are some organizations who are trying to become um, partners with the government in ensuring that they are able to deliver this quality learning. And some of the work that, you know, um, these kind of platforms are doing is to ensure that people know where to find the right, you know, tools, information to ensure that there's quality across board. So it's not like I'm deceiving myself that, oh, I'm training my child with this tool. But the truth is actually very substandard. So I think technology is helping to, like, solve some of those challenges, actually. Mustafa, and I really want you to I want to hear the bit about does designing and delivering technology really solve maybe any of these adoption problems? Is it more of a hindrance? Is it more of a problem? It's actually a two side thing. It's a problem and it's a solution. How it constitutes to be a solution is the fact that it helps with access, reach, um, people that typically would not have access to education in the past with alternate education, just with technology as an enabler, can gain access to it in as much as they can gain access to a technological device, right? But the problem is, like I really mentioned, the quality assurance. It got worse that at a point, Google became the standard. As long as you can find it on Google, it is valid. Mm -hmm. But at the long run of it is anybody can put anything on Google. Mm -hmm. As long as you have access to a website, a domain, mm -hmm. you can post anything on Google. Mm -hmm. So there is no qu that quality assurance. Mm -hmm. So we need a whole lot of quality come through uh, where it's not essentially the responsibility of just the platform that are providing the tech. Governments should come on board, teachers and educational professionals should come on board to ensure that the use of technology in alternative education is done rightly such that we can control the quality of what goes out to learners in form of quality um, education. All right. Thank you, Mustafa and Erelua, for this beautiful introduction into what alternative education is and the role technology can play in supporting better adoption and possibly design of alternative education programs for youths in Nigeria. Now to you, our listeners, we would love to hear from you. Before now, did you know anything about alternative education? Have you or your words been involved in any tech-enabled alternative education programs? And how did it go? Did they stay to the end? Like Erelu have mentioned, 
or did you have a problem about the quality of the programs just because you know they were done online we'd love to hear from you send me an sms or a whatsapp message to any of our numbers 0703-165-0809-0706-402-0742. We would love to hear from you. And remember, we have a very active Telegram and WhatsApp community. Simply search for EdTech Mondays Nigeria on Telegram or on WhatsApp to join the community, drop your feedback, and meet people who are enthusiastic about EdTech in Nigeria just like you. And in case you know anyone who missed this episode or any of the episodes that we've had so far this year, do not worry. Push them onto Spotify. Simply search for EdTech Mondays Nigeria or on YouTube, CC Hub Africa, at Tech Mondays Nigeria to listen, join the conversation, and drop their feedback. Until I come your way, same time, same station, I remain your host, Chinyalu Akpa. Keep using technology to push the frontiers on education. Is bye for now. It's time for EdTech Mondays, brought to you by Mastercard Foundation and CC Hub.